so what have you been playing recently then? I haven't played literally hardly anything at all for weeks. Really? Um, I've wanted to play something, but I just haven't. I've played some Splinter Cell on my One X a bit. Mm. <coughs> um, I'm actually just now converting some Wii games to chuck on the Wii U. <laughs> I've done a lot of that, yeah. How cool um, is the Wii U when it's modded, though? Like, it's I... awesome. <laughs> The fucking potential that the Wii U actually had is, is disgusting. What you look at when you look at what the machine is capable of, and what Nintendo actually allowed it to do, it, oh, it's pathetic. I don't it beggars belief. I don't know why uh, they designed it in such a way where it does not accept GameCube discs because it runs them perfectly. It runs them absolutely perfectly. I don't understand the um, the logic behind or that. Or even just release GameCube games on the eShop if they wanted to. I believe, them. yeah. I mean, I believe <coughs> um, that they would have done that eventually anyway if the Wii U did better. But the thing is... It... No, I don't know. They don't tend to do things people want. Nintendo's a very frustrating company. Um I mean, you look at the the virtual console and stuff. Um, they fucking dropped the ball with that because there is no virtual console on, on on the Switch at all. You've got like the Netflix style handful, I, tiny I, handful I of games. I don't like it. I don't mind it. I mean, it's okay, but <clears throat> I would rather have the option to download and buy the games. Because um, we know what Nintendo's like for just dropping support for stuff. Yeah. When they drop support for it. You, you it's gone anymore. no it's gone um, you know. look at the Wii the Wii you can't even access the shop uh, I don't know if you can still re-download stuff on if, the Wii if you've purchased the games there, there is a way to still download them mm, okay. um, I, I did see a video on it uh, a while ago <clears throat> Yeah. where you can do some sort of certain thing and you can actually re-download the games that you've purchased but you can't buy anything no, obviously. Well, that's good of them, <clears throat> you know, heroic Nintendo. Um, but yeah. But the, the, what's crazy about the Wii and the Wii U, though, is just how easy they are to mod as well. They're so ridiculously easy. All you need is a memory card, uh, an SD card. The, the Wii U, I'm just blown away by yeah. how like, easy it is to just play. And the, like, <laughs> it's like um, I've been playing F-Zero GX on it. Mm -hmm. And it... It's absolutely flawless. It, yeah. it, it's the one of the hardest games to get to, you know, to work on an emulator or anything. Mm -hmm. But on the Wii U, fucking perfect. But that's that's the thing with the Wii U though. It uses the same <clears throat> CPU as the GameCube. Yeah. Just, you know, triple core and significantly faster than the GameCube, but it's the same CPU. Um I, I was watching Modern Vin was it Modern Vintage Gamer and um he did some interesting stuff on the Wii U and they actually use the same CPU that the Mac, was it the MacBook Pro had? Um, or the, whatever the MacBook was in 2004. Fucking hell. That's, that kind of blew my mind. It was the same CPU from 2004 in the Wii U. Oof. What is Nintendo? Yeah, um, which is the same CPU they put in the Wii and then the same CPU. The next, like Nintendo console might be as powerful as an Xbox. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know where Nintendo's going to go from here, to be honest. Uh... I was thinking about this the other day at work. So I chat with two of the guys. They're big like, um, Xbox guys. Mm -hmm. And I was just... Because one of them's got a Switch as well. So he's like, you know, what do you think they'll end up doing with the next one? Because obviously the Series X and the PS5's coming out mm -hmm. this year. And I... I genuinely don't know because I don't know if they're going to do like with the Wii U be a bit cocky like oh the Switch sold really well we'll just do that again it'll work and then it goes tits up and they have to learn another hard lesson if you know what I mean or mm. will they make another Switch type thing that's actually powerful and can keep up I don't know I don't know what they do I, you, I think we're going to get another Switch I think we're going to get a more powerful Switch well that model is far too successful to just drop so, yeah. yeah. Um I don't think <clears throat> Nintendo as much as it sucks, I don't think Nintendo will ever produce a standard uh, games console again. Why would they? I don't see it. No. Um it sells too well especially in Japan, which is obviously where they, you know, they cater very heavily and uh, I don't see them That's it. Yeah, wanting to go back from mobile gaming. 
And I think the thing with the Switch as well, I mean, obviously it's not as powerful, obviously, as the other systems, but it is powerful enough, you know. There are some things on it. I mean, can it run Crisis? Apparently so. Um, have, you, have you seen it? Yeah. <laughs> That's It's one of those things where... Yeah, I've seen it. The thing with the Switch is it's, it's not a matter of whether it can, it's whether it should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Outer <laughs> Worlds like... comes to mind... That's oh the oh fuck it it's just Ooh. it's bordering on unplayable. You Arc. know, it's just you know you see him let's say they wanted to try and get I don't know the Last of Us two on it or something. <laughs> run like Minecraft, yeah, one hundred and twenty p. <laughs> yeah, and have like no textures or something. I'd be like, oh, but it works on it. It's like I mean, yeah. it technically <laughs> runs, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I've had a similar thing with Resident Evil 6 actually on the Switch. Uh, I downloaded the demo to try it, and because I was like, "Holy fucking oh, what, shit!" The, the streamed one. No, 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 the, no, no, no. Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil. Oh, sorry, Evil no, 6. Resident 6. I thought you, I was thinking of Resident 7. You know, no, like, my internet and... couldn't handle that. Jesus, it's, it's barely <laughs> holding together over this call. Um, no, I, I had Resident Evil 5 and 6 because they had demos for those. You remember demos? Remember when companies put out demos? That was good. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, you can see if the game was shit before we actually paid for it. Yeah, that's that's something that's gone by the by now. Nintendo are crafty though; they only release demos for games which are like well made. Yeah, accurate. They, like, they know that if someone plays a shit game, they're just not going to buy it. Well, I remember when... Crafted World. I will say that I bought, I got the demo for Crafted World, and straight away I just didn't like it. Really? Before. There's no way I'm going to buy it now. Why is that? Because uh, Yoshi's um, Kirby's Epic Yarn was fantastic, and Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U. Is really I haven't good. played that, but I want but to. <clears throat> the, the the problem with the uh, Crafted World one is it's like it's not just the fact that it, it runs at a stupidly low resolution, but it's the fact that the music's terrible. It's just it, it's like not a lot of effort was made with it, really. Mm. Nintendo's, like yeah, that. that that is a bit of a shame because Nintendo's actual overall game quality has slipped significantly in recent years. I think it slipped quite a lot. Do you remember? I'm like, not... um, go on, go on. No, no, no. I was just going to say because obviously I'm such a always been a big Nintendo fan, but I I've, I've sold my Switch. I don't. I never even fucking played it because there's nothing no. for me worth playing on it. Um, uh, talking of that, we're actually in quite a drought of software for the Switch at the moment. Um, there's it's, nothing. Uh, someone, yeah, because they did you watch that mini direct they done uh, last week? No, I was at work, but um, I heard that it was, what, it was what nothing. What the fuck is that all about? It's Honestly, nothing. They, like, um, I'm trying to think if there was anything of any note. I don't think there was because even all the you know big Nintendo channels that are like love Nintendo were like uh, well, I saw shit. yeah it was like oh shit it was the best Nintendo presentation ever you click on the video and they're like what the fuck was that yeah no it was it was just because I actually thought oh I'll watch it you never know they might announce something that makes me go oh I might get another Switch at some point mm. no all I was like well I'm glad I sold it what was it was that <laughs> Shin Mikami <laughs> Tensei or whatever it was I mean, I don't yeah even something know. that has no interest I don't even know what it is it. to be honest um, and it's like the DLC for Smash, where they, you know, announcing new characters, and it's like they've gone from announcing things like Banjo Kazooie, where people are like, "Oh my, that's fucking amazing!" To, oh, it's one of those characters from that Arms game that no one plays. Arms. Like, oh Jesus. Jesus. I mean, I'm not going to rag on the game. I haven't played it, but I'm just saying, like, no one really. Apparently, it was all right, it. but it's not. Well, my, it my might game. well be. I, just, I have no interest in it. But nope. Nor I, to be fair. <clears throat> it just seems like they're doing bare minimum over at Nintendo lately. I, but then again, so the Switch is selling so well, I, I can see why, just, why even worry about making the effort. People are still buying it. But then when your product yeah. is doing well, you don't need to really do anything. You don't need to push it because the the unit is exactly. selling. Look at Sony. Look at Look at how they came into the PS4 generation. They were practically, you know, 
bending over backwards and doing everything they possibly could. PlayStation 4 mm-hmm. became successful, and now they're kind of asleep at the wheel. Microsoft was really successful with the 360, and they came into this generation telling you this fucking stupid VCR box that they brought out that's going to blow your mind in, in how many different ways you can watch TV and all this shit. It's shoveling connect down your throat. And then when people didn't buy it and the system started to fail, look how they turned around with Phil Spencer. Exactly. And they it's become an Yeah, and it's become a really consumer friendly system. Game Pass. Still, I don't think Microsoft is necessarily gonna to appeal to the biggest, you know, like mass audience. People no. like us appreciate it because we're like, Oh mate, I can play the whole Splinter Cell collection in four K. Mm-hmm. You know, it's awesome. But to the average consumer, they'll just be like, oh, well, yeah, but it doesn't have the exclusive that Sony has, if, if you know what I mean. But I, mm-hmm. I still think, I think the One X is the best console, as consoles go, mm-hmm. at the minute. It's the um, best Might hardware. not have the like, exclusives, but, you know, as we've said several times, it's like, but it does have a really, really good back catalogue and obviously. I mean, Game Pass is awesome as well. Yeah, yeah. Game Pass is incredible. Like, it really is. Um, Streets of Rage, when that was coming out, Streets of Rage 4, I was really hyped for that game. And I was thinking, oh, I'll buy it on my PS4. Day one came on Game Pass. The Outer Worlds. I never would have probably brought The Outer Worlds, but day one came out on Game Pass. I played all the Gears of War games. Um, I didn't want to buy them again, but they're all on Game Pass. Uh, I played Void Bastards, which is a a brilliant game. It's something that I probably wouldn't have taken a risk on buying it, but it's on Game Pass. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, a legendary game. Not really the sort of game that I would have played, but it's on Game Pass. Like, everything's on Game Pass. Red Dead 2. Yeah, GTA. All the Halo games. Yeah. All the, every, all the uh, fucking... <laughs> the thing is, uh, as well, with this Xbox event that they had, and some people were disappointed, but that that's fine. You know, you can't please everybody. But what is pretty bloody impressive is they showed 33 games, okay? And there were some good games there. And they've said, day one, every single one of these games will be on Game Pass. Sony can't compete with that. Well, they're, go- they're only going to have backwards compatibility with their top 100 PS4 games, isn't it? Uh, that's day one. They will be adding more. They're, they're going to get as close to 100% of the library as they can. But Well, you've got to remember how long it took them to enable you to change your gamer tag. <laughs> oh, that was only 12 you years know. old, wasn't it? Only 12 years. I mean, come on. You so, know, some you people, know, some people died of old age waiting for that to happen, yeah. <clears throat> um, no, but again, we're, we're seeing some of Sony's arrogance from the PlayStation yeah, but it's the 3 same era. Thing. It's with Nintendo, that's what happens. You do well, they get arrogant. It's just what happens, and it? it's mm-hmm. the same with anyone. You know, they get good at something, they think, oh, I don't need to make an effort because I'm already good at it. Kind of thing. Yes, but the thing with Nintendo's arrogance, though, is. They're a little bit more unique because they were quite arrogant with the Wii U uh, when that thing was coming out. And when it started to fail, instead of becoming really prosumer and all that, what did they do? They did nothing. <laughs> they just, oh, we just let the system die then. We shovel out some titles. They, they, I don't care what anyone says. They must have been working on the Switch like, oh, yeah, straight yeah. away because they... And they thought, hang on a minute, like, why even bother with the Wii U? Because mm-hmm. we've got this console here which we know is going to you know, kick some serious ass when it comes out. Yeah. Why bother? They really didn't support the Wii U at all. I mean, when you look nope. at the 3DS, the 3DS launched to some very uh, <laughs> turbulent launch conditions. I mean, the, the system was basically dead for the first six months. But they slashed the price. They started pumping out software. Um, you know, they, they, they kept the firmware updates that coming that added more features they really put a lot of effort into getting that system selling and moving the wii u they were just eh, oh well yeah but it was just they didn't bother right from the get-go it no, wasn't they didn't. so much it didn't sell well so they didn't bother they just didn't really bother from the start particularly no. they, i think what? they were just expecting it to be super popular just because of the wii yeah i mean a lot of people it wasn't, just obviously no a lot of people just thought it was a um you know, upgrade for the Wii, you know, uh, the tablet controller. And I think, look, look, the tablet was a cool idea, but 
I don't think it helped sell the system. The average gamer didn't care about the tablet, let's be honest. Um, I like it. But I like it as well. It doesn't well. need to be there. No, no. Um, and it's so, even by Nintendo, it is so underutilized. So oh. utterly underutilized. I mean, there's a few, like, situations where it's cool. You mm-hmm. know, like, yeah. um, oh, what do you call it? Um, Fatal Frame. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, using it as a camera and uh, like playing, trying to play Wonderful 101, like the re releases now, where you have to use a, a, a control stick yeah. to draw the shapes to, to make the, you know, weapons and what have you. Whereas on the gamepad, you just did it with your finger or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that were cool. Not essential by any means, but. No. You know, and Zelda games, awesome having your items. On your gamepad, that's one thing it is cool for. Yeah, and you could switch out items on the fly. You had your map yeah. on there. It had a lot of potential, and also because it had that setup, it could um, have uh, DS games and things on it as well, which is actually really mm-hmm. fucking clever when you think about it. But again, it was so underutilized. How many 3DS games actually came out for the system? A handful. You know. <sighs> yeah, there ain't a lot. No, there isn't, and. Um, you know they cut so many corners with the hardware as well when when it was when it dropped we already knew that the next playstation was coming the next xbox was coming um and for for them to kick out a system that had you know two gigs of ram when the games can only use one gig of ram and the, they knew the next systems were having eight gigs the fact that they they put a cheap 32 gigabyte flash ssd thing in there instead of just giving us a 500 gig hard drive and just uh, and the fact that it only had 32 gigs of storage on the top model was actually a big bottleneck for some developers um the guys that make odd world they really struggled because they had to make their game somehow fit into the eight gigabyte model's memory when you downloaded it because it was a download only game i believe uh, and nintendo mandated that if you want the game on our platform you have to make it fit on this you have to make it about six gigs and they said they really struggled to optimize that um the graphics chip on it was a good jump ahead of the 360 and the playstation 3 but it was i mean it was a 720p machine really um coming out oh yeah yeah at the end of the 720p systems and the cpu which you know the architecture it was well you know 12 13 years old when the system dropped but i think they cut a lot of um you know made a lot of cuts for that system just so they could put the gamepad in and make it affordable but was it worth well sacrifice because it was quite a cheap system when it first came out as well wasn't it it was only about 270 pounds i think which for a home console if you think about how much they cost these days you know, it's well, quite a good value. How many times have we said if they got rid of the gamepad, sold it cheaper with you know a normal control like the Pro controller, say, mm-hmm. and just really, really supported the uh, virtual console on that and marketed yeah. it as the Nintendo console, where it's like you can play everything right from the NES through the handheld systems mm-hmm. all the way up to the Wii U. Yeah, sell it as a. I mean, look at the classic systems, how well they sold. If they had marketed the bloody Wii U as like the Nintendo home console. Yeah, or they could say, look, the Wii U is rebrand it. This is now the Nintendo Classic. You can play all of your legacy systems. The Nintendo Archive, or or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah, and just support it. Maybe redesign the box, make it smaller, make it you know, a, a tiny little you know plug in and play thing so if you want the cutting edge of nintendo you can get the switch but if you want something to keep the kids happy and 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 have access to the huge back library you could buy this cheap little device kind of like what sony did with the playstation vita tv where they brought out that tiny little box it was a playstation vita um Mm. that you plug into your tv and it played all the vita games it had a quite a big back catalog of ps2 classics psp games um and ps1 games as well um and they they brought that out for like 80 quid with a control pad you know the nintendo could right. have done something like that with the wii u they could have yeah we've, we've often said about that and 
talking of backwards compatibility as well when sony brought out the playstation classic why don't they just bring out like a playstation classic console you know charge i don't know 150 quid for it give it an optical drive allow it to play playstation 1 and 2 games um, and then give it an online store where maybe you can download legacy That's titles. The whole thing. I don't understand why these companies don't make the same with Nintendo and their classic. And yeah, they're classic. all the same in this regard. It's why they don't just have a store and you decide what games you want to get mm-hmm. on, on, on these consoles. Mm-hmm. And they can just have a huge back catalogue and people just buy the console cheap and then they earn their money from all these fucking downloads. Yeah. I um, get it. I mean, even if they don't allow you to use your your discs, uh, which is bullshit. But hey, look, if if <laughs> if they're not going to allow that, there's nothing we can do. Um, but yeah, uh, think about it. Every single PlayStation, every single PlayStation, apart from the PlayStation Four, has played PlayStation One games, including the PSP. And the PlayStation Vita. And the original PS3 as well. Yeah. Was, yep. was it the big boy one? All of the, every PlayStation. Um, and then the PlayStation 2, obviously. The PlayStation 3, early models, played PS2 games. I mean, think about when the PlayStation 3 came out. It played PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 games. That's insane. And then the PlayStation 4 comes out. And even though you've already bought these games, there's no way to download PlayStation 1 games. That's inexcusable. There's no reason not to have that because they're already on the store. Sony already have an emulator for the PlayStation 1 because PlayStation 1 played the PS1 games, obviously. PlayStation 2 played PS1 games. Uh, Every single PlayStation 3 played PlayStation 1 games. The PSP played PlayStation 1 games. The PlayStation Vita plays playstation one games so why why did they drop oh fuck and you know they've released a small selection of playstation 2 classics for the ps4 so they do have a very capable emulator yeah but a lot of it comes down to that, uh, what's it called playstation now isn't it? they just want to try and push that playstation but no one wants that everyone no. just wants to be able to just buy games mm-hmm. and play them I can uh, like what Nintendo's doing. That's what I mean. They're forcing you to do this online thing mm-hmm. when really a lot of people just want to buy games mm-hmm. and have them and play them whenever they want. Especially when you've already bought the games. Like I mean, I've got I've got games, um, PlayStation One games that I've bought on my PlayStation uh, Three. Uh, bought on my PlayStation Vita. I've got loads of games, PS One games on that. I've got PlayStation 2 classic games that I've played on my, that I've bought on my PlayStation 4. It's so messy. You've got like all these games all over the place and you've got to look at what console can play what and it's just and you know why don't they just bring out a cut down PlayStation 3, an original model cut down PlayStation 3. I mean, I'm sure they could produce it fairly cheap these days. And just sell sell that as a PlayStation classic. Sell the one that could play the PlayStation one games, PlayStation 2 games, PlayStation 3 games, all the way up. Sell it for like £150 because people will buy it. And then that gets rid of the whole need to have backwards compatibility yeah, baked again, in. It's like you can see like the adverts for it. Where yeah. they, just, they, they show the games throughout the generations and they're like... Here's the PlayStation know, Classic. You can own them all in one place. It's mm-hmm. just like... <coughs> the idea just sells itself. I don't, I don't understand. I really don't. Especially when you look at, um, have you heard of the new emulation machine called the Polymega? It's. Mm, I don't think so. It's very expensive. It's about five hundred pounds for an emulation machine, um, and right. it's got an online store. There you can download games from it. Uh, it's all publisher supported. It's got. It's the first emulation machine to have a optical drive, and. At the right. moment, it's compatible with 23 systems. And it's got a module on the top that swaps out. And that changes the cartridge slot. On the bottom, you've got your... Let me let me just read up all the systems. The Polymega um, actually I feel runs. like I've heard of it, but I don't know if I've seen it. Polymega. Let's have a look at this thing. So, I mean, as I said, it's 
ridiculously expensive, but it's very, very cool. Um, so it's compatible with 30 systems. It will play PlayStation 1 games, Sega Saturn games, Genesis games, Mega Drive games, 32X games, Sega CD games, uh, TurboGrafx-16 games, PC Engine games, it plays Super Arcade CD-ROM games, it plays Neo Geo CD games, Neo Geo games, NES games, Super NES games, Super Famicom games, and there's more systems coming. So you get a base unit, which is like a normal console, and then you can buy different attachments that go on the top, and that changes the front of the system. And every time you buy one of these modules, which cost about 60 quid each, they come with a, repl a replica control pad of that system as well. Um, right. Oh, oh, no, no. Now you're saying that. Now mm -hmm. I think I remember seeing something about it. Yep. Because they showed an N64 controller. Yes, they did. did. Where it's like, you know, obviously it's made to look like the original. Indeed. Um, and it's the first ever system that's got uh, optical drive you know, uh, a way of playing old optical drive um, systems because these systems are getting old and they're dying. Mm -hmm. Emulation is the only way. Uh, and I've been looking at this project for ages and I'm just like, why doesn't Sony make something like this? Why doesn't Nintendo do it? Uh, Microsoft don't really need to do it because they're, they're, they've been smart. They've been good prosumer um, people. But yeah, so out of the gate, when this system drops, it will have 9,000 games on it which is pretty stellar. Um, but it's quite smart as well because it runs an Intel CPU. Um, it's got a really nice operating system to it. It rips all of the games that you put into the system onto an NVMe um, SSD and it runs them all off that. Even like the cartridge games? Yes, it rips them all to the system. Um, uh, yeah, the discs, the whole lot. So you pop your disc in, you install it, same with the cartridge, kind of like a modern system. And it's got right. the online store with all the systems on it. And as long as the publisher supports it, they sell games through that. And it's got like uh, friends lists on it, I believe. You've got your, your streaming and video capture. You support save states. It's a really interesting system. And there's some serious pedigree behind the development team on this as well. It's got ex-members from Rare developing it. And, and you know, it, it's a nice system. Oh, also, here's something that make you shit your pants. Oh, go on then couple of uh, months ago they dropped a big one they've announced it's going to come out with a light gun there's a company that have made a light gun okay yeah there's a company that have made a light gun compatible with HDTVs Polymega brought the company and the patents and it's now coming to that so all these light gun games from the Sega Saturn and Mega Drive and NES it, it will work flawlessly with all of those there it's a very tightly hidden secret how they've got this to actually work with modern TVs mm. but they've done it and it's just mental and that is one hell of a killer app because there's loads of cool um, light gun games from yesteryear that you can't play anymore unless you have a CRT TV yeah. um, so imagine just having this box that just does everything I mean I'm looking at the price tag of 500 odd quid and I'm like <sighs> it's kind of cool though would I pay five hundred pounds for one? Maybe, because can you think of all those systems that you could clear out? And obviously HDMI upscaling for all of these systems. The emulation mm. has been tested. The emulation has been tested uh, by um, was it Modern Vintage Gamer has done quite a, a, a lot on this, and he's saying the emulation is almost perfect. The Sega Saturn is a very difficult emulate, uh, system to emulate. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And he's saying that, that the emulator that they've built is very close to perfect. Um, a lot of the cartridges that other emulators and other clone systems struggle with, like um, Star Fox, that use the extra chips oh, yeah. that don't work on a lot of these clone systems, they all work flawlessly on this. Um, so they've put a lot... Ooh a lot into this um all the emulators and also a got... big one is any n64 emulator because they it's notorious for being 
just horrendous to, to emulate like perfectly. Yep. Um, I mean, what what so. what they've done, which is quite interesting, with some of the emulators on this machine, is they've used like Kega Fusion, I think, is what they use for the Sega side of it. But they haven't just used the off-the-shelf Kega Fusion. They've gone to the original developer and said, "Look, build a special optimized emulator for our machine." And they've done that with like the PlayStation emulator. Um, all the emulators have been totally retooled to take full advantage of the CPU and GPU in this. Um, and where they've had games that have been very difficult to run um, for different re uh, reasons, they have made sure that those games are compatible. Also, the system is compatible with firmware updates. So they said uh, out of the box, the emulation is going to be around 95%, but it will improve over time. Um okay it's a really fucking cool system and i what i thought if they add a uh, dreamcast a dreamcast emulator to this thing which i don't know how they would do that because obviously it's got a cd drive dreamcast uses um uh, gigabyte discs gg roms i don't know maybe they could release an attachment for that i don't know but this is a really exciting thing and this is a product that I also think is really important. We need a box like this on the market. We need, there is room for this, um, to have a premium and premium um, emulation box. Because uh, you know how much of a cunt it is when you have old systems and you've got to mod them with HDMI to, to get even still a shitty picture out and the sound's crap. I was about to say got, the N64 HDMI. Ooh. That you had, yeah, yeah. And even with it, it didn't look great, did it? It was nice to an extent, but it, I mean, it's the best you can make it look yeah. out of an actual console, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it looks good. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't record from my Mega Drive. Uh, I use emulation for that because even though I've got the SCART and the HDMI converter, it looks like shit. It, you know, even the system looking the best it possibly can, it, it, it looks terrible when you record it and upload it. So you might as well just use an emulator. Um, and PlayStation 1 is a bit like that as well. There are some early PlayStation 1 games that look awful. Um, running on the system whereas if you use an emulator you can clean them all up and mm -hmm. you know the frame rate is a lot nicer and stuff like that um so yeah emulation as much as these big companies especially nintendo are like, ooh, emulation is very very important um and i'm actually quite interested in this system i'm gonna i'm gonna actually have a look up once we're finished i'm gonna have to have a look at uh, people Sounds are really cool. it is really cool and um i think Yes, it's expensive. Five hundred pounds. <sighs> yeah, uh, you're not talking a few quid. But if you're big into the retro scene and you've got a huge library of games and stuff that you want to play, and this gives um, and, and this system actually supports the developer as well because you can buy the games on the store. And if you look at the UI for the system as well, it's very, very nice. It, it looks. A little bit like the 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 Xbox UI, but um, yeah, it's nice and it can do a whole host of things. It, you know, we haven't even touched on the extra features of the system, like instant resume and and shit. Um, but yeah, definitely something to to look out for. Uh, I'm gonna have to wrap this up. I just noticed it's nearly half past nine. I will be up at four, mm -hmm. but yeah, same as you, I guess. But this is any. Uh, this is like the first part of our rambling series. I don't know what we're going to call this yet. Just fire it off every week and talk a load of shit. Um, this I was, don't know. This is the first Fuck episode I anyway. Know. This is two old men spitting into a microphone. Bottom line is, everything I'm seeing from modern games at the minute is pissing me off. Yeah, <laughs> and it's I'm, pissing me off. The more the thing is the more i'm seeing rant, like the, rant, the new stuff rant. coming out the more i'm wanting to play older stuff yeah you know what i mean it's like i'm i'm not going to go into it or anything because i know you haven't played through it yet or anything but like last of us 2 like for me <sighs> just disappointment city and like um the showcases for both playstation and xbox it's like 
it's not necessarily the games they announced on these things. It's more they're meant to be getting you excited about the next generation, and I'm looking like, is that it? I'm <laughs> like, is that it? Like when you saw the presentations for the PS2 or the PS3 or whatever, like it was like, wow, look at those fucking graphics. Look yeah. at how this amazing stuff we can do. And they're just like, oh, we're bringing out another Halo game, which I know you're excited about. Don't get me wrong. A little but bit. Like, a little bit. As soon as Quite I saw lot. the graphics and all that, and it wasn't the fact that most important, it's not that, but it's the fact that they're meant to be showing off the next generation. And I was like, um, it doesn't look very good. Like, you meant to be going like, look at this ray tracing, look at this, look at that. Look, we can't do, you know, before this console, mm-hmm. cause it's that good. And instead they show a game that's running on a PC. <laughs> Without <laughs> the like ray running tracing. Running on low settings. I was mm-hmm. like, what? <laughs> yep, yep. The, the, uh, with Halo as well, the the ray tracing lighting engine is going to be patched well, they showed in that on the trailer, didn't launch. they? You know, yeah. the one that you got like well excited about, where they showed the ray tracing and how it affected. And then, yeah, it was just weird because that one looked so much better. I know that something apparently has gone on. There is a reason that that trailer that they just showed doesn't look good and and all the rest of it. But it's one of those things like, yeah. why show it if it doesn't look that good? Just wait and then show it when it does look good. They have I said just... that the game will look significantly better on release. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's but... like, why show it? And they go, oh, but it will be better. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like... I mean, the thing is, we, we're, we're hitting the law of diminishing returns now. Um, oh, absolutely. Um... I mean, you look at the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro. Fuck me, the games look good. They do. Uh, well, so, I mean, you look at what they're putting out, like what yeah. some of the games look like they're putting out. I mean, more um, so the PlayStation than the Xbox, because as, uh, as much as I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Last of Us 2 Story or whatever, it looks fucking amazing. Yes. And, oh. Like, um, God of War, uh, mm-hmm. fucking Horizon, and rest yep. of, they all look, like, amazing. Yeah. And I think that's why these announcements that they've been making lately are, about the next consoles don't look that impressive, because it's like, well, we've kind of already almost seen, like, that quality. Mm-hmm. They will get so, better. They, they, you know, every oh, yeah, generation absolutely. starts off rough. I mean, do you remember some of the launch games for the PS4? Oof, knack. Remember knack? Well, everyone thought, um, <laughs> oh, what was it? Killzone oh, 4? Was God. it? Is it Killzone, uh, Killzone 4? Shadow 4. Oh. Shadow 4, that's that the one. Fucking and when I started shit. playing it, I was like, um, oh, shit. Uh, uh, this isn't very good. <laughs> well, no, I, I'd come and from. Yeah, knack. Oh. <laughs> I'd come from the 360. I'd u- used to Halo and going over to Killzone Shadowfall. I was like, "This is dog shit. This is, you know, it's a pretty looking game, but it's fucking wank. The guns and oh no, 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 no. Um, yeah, I, I think we we just hit the law of diminishing returns. Now there's only so much they can really push graphics fidelity. Now uh, ray tracing is going to be a big game changer, but we haven't seen any of it yet in these systems. That's what I mean. We haven't seen anything to make you go, wow, that really no. is impressive. Um, the Sony showcase was far more impressive. Um, well, at least they showed something. Like they in, did. Like Horizon and Ratchet and Clank. And, and they... They said yeah, they actually showed something. Yeah, and they said all of their gameplay was running on a PlayStation Five console. Whereas Microsoft, I'm just surprised at Microsoft because they needed they needed mm. to come out of the gate, you know, punching. Yes, they did. They, they, they kind of fumbled a little bit. At all. Mm. I mean, I will say the games the games list that they showed, they really do have something for everybody. Um, there's like Stalker too. That, that just—I did Who not saw that expect coming? that in a million years. Ah, oh, as soon as I, I saw I the artifact, Stalker was dead years ago. I never. Even, yeah. The thing is with Stalker, it's one of those franchises that it, we said this between us. Like it's so rough around the edges, but it has mm-hmm. so much potential. Like the world and the Ooh. and everything was so cool, but it was always rough. And you know, I mean, you couldn't even finish some bloody objectives because it was glitched. Well, the know, fans had to fix the game. And stuff. Fans but, had to fix that game. Yeah. Um, but the, oh, I knew that was Stalker. As soon as I saw the uh, the the Ferris wheel, I was like, Ooh, Chernobyl. I don't know. Chernobyl. I was kind of thinking, oh, it's going to be a, a, a Metro or a DLC for Metro mm. coming out or something. I, that's what I was thinking. And it's like, 
I, I just I, I just knew it. I knew it. And then and then when he went into that like tunnel and you could see the thing floating around like artifact and then he threw the bolt in and I was just like No. Really? Yeah, that was cool. And uh, if it is a proper like polished game, that's one oh, thing gonna, I would be definitely excited about. It, it's gonna have to be sure. polished. I, they... I don't think it will be though. <laughs> I reckon it'll be a broken buggy mess just like all the others and it'll be patched forever. Yeah, but that's just modern <laughs> yeah. games now. This is modern <laughs> games. I mean I've been playing Days Gone on the PS4 Pro and my god is that game beautiful. But the bugs in it Oh, I've had zombies like drifting through walls. I've had um, there was a cutscene. I actually recorded it on my PS4 Pro. There's a gun like floating in the air as these <laughs> as the main character was talking to this other other guy, um, and I was just like, he's called Iron Mike, and I was like, um, there's literally a glitch in this cutscene that is totally breaking the immersion. They're they're going on about some serious zombie shit about how many people were murdered and when everything went to shit and it was this terrible you know they're trying to give you some 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 pretty deep stuff and there's this gun just floating around <laughs> there's a, i'll be honest with you there's some real good ones oh. there's two as well i've seen some real good glitches uh. in that but yeah just make it just really funny i've got the last of us two and I've played the first twenty minutes of it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play it until I've done Days Gone because I've got too many big games on the go at the moment. It's and a long game now. But it's that's the hour. trouble. It's thirty hours long. <clears throat> Why? It's way too. Um, I can't, I've heard. I literally can't go into it. I've I've heard from from some of my subs. Uh, a lot of them are saying that a lot of the people that they've watched play it, even the ones that have enjoyed the games, get burnt out halfway through. It's too long. And it's <sighs> the fact that half the game is literally pointless. Yeah, like it affects nothing. It's yeah. it's meant to make you feel a certain way about something that you just don't. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's just a waste of ten hours time, basically, because it's like I don't care about this person or this story. I just don't care, mm-hmm. and that seems to be the general consensus. Is no one cares. And, <laughs> and the thing is, like, but I mean, obviously, all the big reviewers do. Well, you're in the same boat as me. You know, we have very little time to actually play a game. So if you're going to sit down and play something, it has to be you know worth it. <laughs> and when you look at like a third person action game that's 30 hours i mean i wouldn't mind so much because it's like, i mean when i played the first last of us and i played it for ungrounded it that took was me a long, long time to finish it because it was hard hmm. but yeah. because the story was so good it made me want to get to that next bit and i you know i was eager to see it through whereas as i said i i, I struggle to find anyone who really has that drive for the second one because it just it's it's just miserable for the sake of being miserable if you, if you know what I mean it, it's like, yeah it's not particularly enjoyable it's just like oh god another miserable thing's just happened oh god yeah. that's depressing like, it's not like it makes you want to go I can't wait to see what's next <laughs> yeah who's <laughs> gonna know? get horribly are gonna, fed into... are they gonna kill a kitten yeah. oh this is gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> we've already seen you know I don't know pregnant women die and all that lot yeah. hey oh I just killed a pregnant woman oh hey. that was it please. oh let's oh. go kill a dog that'll cheer us up <laughs> Do you know one of the saddest <laughs> things I've seen in The Last of Us 2 actually it's not really a spoiler but there's a bit where you're in a kennel with a dog and it comes up to you with a ball in its mouth Well you're playing ball with it Yeah and you can throw the ball up over the kennel so it can't... Yeah, You can throw it out of the fence so, so it can't get it And it just sits there in the corner looking at the ball on the other side whimpering and I'm like yeah, I was watching this is the this. whole thing I, I was, like, is, is there any the happiness in this so at all? sad it's funny yeah. <laughs> you know because that's the thing you can't take the last was too like that seriously no. i don't think you can no i don't it's think like you can. it's so bleak it's almost <laughs> funny because <laughs> it's just it's just relentless it's everything bad yeah nothing's happy no nope. and nothing ever will be happy it's like it's and the characters insane. make stupid decision after stupid oh, decision that's my biggest gripe because the choices that are made with certain characters that you oh, know, I, I are know the main reason I love the, the first game. Yeah. But like the the choices that are made, it's like they would never fucking do that. No. 
<laughs> so I mean, why did they just do that? It was just dumb. The stuff that I've seen Joel do make him seem really dim. And he's oh. not. He's so smart. He's a survivor. He's, he's a piece of shit. Well, Everybody mate, in this world is. It's my favourite. It's the fucking... Uh, the guy that... I mean, oh, do you know what? We're going to end up going into a whole Last of Us 2 rant in a minute. Should but we do a Last of Us 2 thing for another we, video? We should do, right, we should, we should stop there and we'll go into one. Because, honestly, there's some things about it that are genuinely quite funny. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I still... want to know who wrote some of the, the lines that, that are in the game because they're amazing. <laughs> I, I still can't get over the fact that, you know, there's this one ray of happiness in the game where you can play ball with a dog and you can throw the fucking ball outside yeah. the kennel. Even that, they've, they've made playing with a dog sad. It's just... Yeah, but it's, <laughs> even that bit with the dog is showing the other perspective of something really shitty you do. Yeah. Like, so you know it ends badly. That's what I mean. Even when it's like trying to be happy, you know, it's like, oh, that ain't going to end well. <laughs> but have you noticed as well that the last of us the last of us uh, the whole universe behind it it's meant to be in a post-apocalyptic zombie game but the zombies are kind of taking a big backseat in the last of us oh two. no it's all about it's not about the zombies and fighting that and trying to survive it's yeah it's, it's all this human bicker <sighs> yeah let's stop because it's going to be destiny we, syndrome we will, all we over will again. come we will come back to it we will point. do what we should yeah. do actually you should come over um at some point and we should play through it together fuck me though i don't oh. <laughs> but we'd be able to talk about it then um the, oh. i don't know if it's better or worse that i know what's coming or not i don't know the, when i i started playing it and I could, first thing is, right, you've got the whole stuff with Joel and Ellie when they're, they're building the scene, because obviously a lot of time has 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 gone on, and the synergy between them in the beginning is so good. It's so good. Well, I hope you enjoy it, because it doesn't last very long. I know, and then and then you're walking around this um, this giant encampment, and you're getting ready to go on this adventure, and there's so much detail, there's so much stuff going on, and you're getting set up to go on a patrol to hunt down these fucking zombies and shit. Um, and you're gearing up, you're meeting your friends, they're having banter, they're talking about stuff that they did the night before. Joel's showed us how to fucking play guitar, and he's, you know, checking up on his daughter. And it's really wholesome, it's really good. And then they said, oh, and you have a snowball fight with kids, which, which you can choose to do, or you don't have to do it. And that was so good it was so well done and um you gear up you ride on out of the gate to go on to your objective for the day and then you you get excited because you're going to do this with these cool people and then all of a sudden you wake up as another character you know but we were just going on an adventure to why am i now this person that i don't know and oh uh, we, we're going to have to definitely come back to it. We I've are. Got, we I've are. got a lot I can say about it. Yeah. I could go on all night. <laughs> Don't I, get me started. That's I think, I think we stop will. stop right there. I think we will go on all night about this. But, um, yeah. Anyway, we're going to leave it there uh, for the first episode. This, You know, I thought uh, it would be difficult to string a few things together. We've been going for an hour. Make me rant. Yeah, we do. Can rant, you know, we can we can rant like motherfuckers. All day and all night, me. Um, yeah, yeah. We've both sat in that room and in your room like fucking old men putting the world to rights. Yes. And now we have a platform to voice our it's opinions. It's because we know proper games and they don't make them like they used to. Veterans That's what it is. Veterans These the millennials oh. and all these kids, they don't know their bloody ball. Kids with the their problems. DLCs and season passes and fortnights. That's another conversation. I think this is what we're going to have to do is have a video dedicated to a rant about a specific thing. So one, you know, one time it will be DLCs and mm -hmm. gambling and all the rest of it. Gam and the next one it will be the fact that you can't buy a game without downloading, you know, two hundred gigs of patches to actually get it to work. And then, you know, and the patches actually break of more of the game about. than they fix. Bethesda oh. patched the game and somehow they made it. Oh. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we, I mean. we, 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 we can we're, go we're gonna on. We're going to have to come back to it. Right. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap this up. This has been the pilot episode. I don't. We don't even have a name for this yet. No. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, this is Rich. Um, we go way back. We really we should have done an intro, really, but we'll figure it out. Well, no, we'll actually do something proper next time. We'll actually do it properly. At the minute, I'm just lounging. Yeah, we've both I'm, been I'm at probably work. Probably naked from the waist down. I actually am. That, so you're all right. No, I got my boxes on. Filthy um, animals. Like I'm just slouched in the chair at the minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we just there. We both work obscene <clears throat> amounts of hours, so yeah. We're both well, that's tired. the problem. It's like because I've been at work today, I feel like yeah. Yeah, yeah. your brain wanders and and you find mm-hmm. it difficult to string sentences together. But uh, we, we'll try and do this once a week if we can. Do you reckon you you you'd have an hour a week to rant? Yeah, yeah. I can rant. Especially this Discord thing. This works really well. Really fucking well. I'm really impressed well, so with this. So if this recording comes out well, yeah, we'll just see. It's looking good on my monitor. It's it's looking very good. Say something. Um, yes. Ooh, ba- ooh, 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 ooh. I noticed my... Uh, <laughs> I thought... <laughs> I thought my desktop was muted. It's not... <laughs> no it's good right now whilst this is actually let's end on a high so um thanks for watching everybody uh we should hopefully be back uh give us your thoughts and opinions um down below let us know topics as well what people actually want us yeah to what do you want because us to rant because we'll fucking rant about anything what we need to do though ty on the next one is actually start recording towards the end of the video because that's when we really get our flow going and we really start moaning yeah because you that? we yeah. actually start talking sensibly at first then it just turns into rant yeah it does um, when you get your dander yeah. up you know and you, <laughs> you hit a topic that really fucks you off yeah um gaming really you love it and you hate it mm. the same equal proportions uh i yeah. think it's because you need to warm up because before i started recording we were ranting for about half an hour like warming up about something then, completely yeah unrelated. i can't even remember what we talked about to be honest but hey uh anyway guys thanks for watching and as always till next time